So what exactly is a subculture? Well, the textbook Media Identity and Culture by Paul Hodgkinson defines it as subculture participants are deemed to have formed communities centered on using culture industry products in subversive ways. While the most recent definition of subculture in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is an ethnic, regional, religious, or social group exhibiting characteristic patterns of behavior sufficient to distinguish it from others within an embracing culture or society. Music plays a role in all culture, but some people have gotten so into a genre of music it has turned into a subculture. One that stands out is the hip-hop subculture. Hip-hop music originated in the African-American community of the Bronx in New York City in the 1970s. The subculture stems directly from the block party that DJ Cool Herc would have in the Bronx at Cedric Avenue. Here he would mix records with a shout out to the crowd or to his dancers. Oftentimes, the dancers would be breakdancing. Although this dance form has existed since 1925, it's an important part of the hip-hop subculture. Beatboxing is also an essential part of the subculture. That is the art of creating rhythm and beat from the human bow. Another music subculture is rave music. The word rave originates from the 1950s in London when it was used to describe the quote-unquote wild bohemian parties that would take place. So until the 1980s, rave was simply just an adjective. In the early 1980s, the rave subculture began. People would mix disco with other dance music. Raves became even more popular when well-known UK raver Frankie Bones began organizing raves in New York City. Raves do not have a defined dance style. It is simply what goes along with the quick house style music. People who have immersed themselves in the rave subculture have a rave name. They are often given this name by a fellow raver. To receive a rave name, one must have been raving for at least one year. There are also rave marriages. These ceremonies take place between two very good friends who promise to look out for each other at raves. There are other ways for those immersed in the rave culture to keep up. up. There are rave magazines like URB or XLA8R. These magazines discuss upcoming raves, different LED lighting techniques, and new and current rave DJs. Despite the fact that the U.S. government has passed many laws against raves due to the apparent drug use there, mainly of ecstasy, the rave subculture is still thriving today. Some subcultures take over so much of one's identity it can can be considered a lifestyle. The term hippie derives from the word hipster, which was used to describe the beatniks who lived in a district of San Francisco called Haight-Ashbury. Many hippies lived in communal societies. They often dressed creatively, with fringe vests, moccasins, and bright clothing. Many hippies used drugs such as marijuana or LSD, and other psychedelic drugs. They have also inspired many musicians like The Grateful Dead, The Who, and Jimi Hendrix. There is even a hippie musical festival called Woodstock. Though it is not the same as it was in the 1960s, the hippie lifestyle is still an existing subculture to this day. However, many subcultures don't require a whole lifestyle commitment. Many people just express themselves through fashion and live a typical mainstream life. However, they still belong to the fashion subculture. To start, hipsters originated in the 1940s. Back then, it was defined as, quote-unquote, characters who like hot jazz. It eventually became a general term for someone who is artsy, retro for their time, and is often alternative in their clothing choices. An issue of Time magazine describes current hipsters like this. Take your grandma's sweater, Bob Dylan's wafers, a jean short, Converse All-Stars, and a can of Pabs, and bam, hipster. That seems to sum up the hipster subculture in a nutshell. The goth subculture is yet another subculture that does not require lifestyle altercation to be a part of it. The goth subculture began in England in the early 80s. The goth theme was an offshoot of the post-punk subculture. Today's goths range from full-out gothic metal groupies to just regular teenagers expressing themselves. Typical goth attire includes corpse paint or the applying makeup so they are very pale, dark eyeliner, and lipstick black fingernails, black hair, and black Victorian, Elizabethan, or medieval-style clothing. Accessories may include pagan or other religious items like pentacles or crosses. Many current fashion designers include Gothic style in their work. These include John Paul Gaultier, Alexander McQueen, and John Galliano. 
The PrEP, or a preppy subculture, stems from the adjective used to describe well-connected, well-educated, rich pre-college U.S. teens who live in the Northeast and attend prep school. However, many U.S. teens take part in the preppy fashion subculture by dressing preppy but not attending prep school, being courteous, or rich. The style started in the 1940s when the Ivy League style took off. Designers like J. Press and Brooke Brothers had stores on Harvard, Princeton, and Yale campuses. Other brands like Ralph Lauren, J. Crew, and Elizabeth McKay began branding themselves as preppy. Preppy clothing examples include Argyle sweaters, Oxford shirts, pleated skirts, cardigans, and boat shoes. They also include colors like burgundy, navy, gray, black, and forest green. In conclusion, subcultures are an important part of the U.S. Without subcultures, mainstream would not exist. It's important to recognize the many different cultures within our own culture.